to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. I have learned from scripture, from my own life, and from the privilege of uncommon mentorship that intimacy controls power intimacy in the spirit controls relevance many believers want to experience the power of god the glory of god but are largely unwilling to commit themselves to spend time to know the lord to spend time to build intimacy intimacy would require time an investment of time Jeremiah chapter 17 we we'll read from verse 9 and 10 Jeremiah chapter 17 from verse 9 and 10 the heart condition of a man is a very big deal to God in doing business with God the primary port of call is the state of a man's heart more than the religious activities that happen the state of a man's heart can veto his activity in church can veto his preaching if he's a man of god can veto all of the kingdom activities if the heart the state of a man's heart is corrupt and not upright before god then his work cannot be acceptable and his work cannot be approved here's what jeremiah 17 from verse 9 and 10 says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked it says who can know it verse 10 i the lord search the heart i try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing that means whilst i preach whilst i lift my hands in worship whilst i engage in all of the religious activities the lord would have to vet the state of a man's heart the purity the sincerity the motif and the motivation i have learned that the motif what sponsors every spiritual activity is a big deal to god the bible talks about the a very interesting synoptic rendition of the woman with the alabaster box the bible says this woman brought in an alabaster box that was of pure nerd a year's wages then the bible says she broke it at the feet of the master and used her hair and the moment judah saw that the bible says judah queried the waste and he said why was this wasted it would have been saved and given to the poor and then the bible was very quick to let us know that not that he cared for the poor but that he was a thief so what he said looked like a show of compassion but it was motivated by a corrupt heart a desire to have access to the treasury so he would keep stealing it's amazing how many well-meaning activities happen around the body of christ but are largely motivated by all kinds of prejudices all kinds of flesh and this is why we are immersed in so many religious activities that do not produce the kind of power and spiritual potency that should come from them the price of intimacy we must love the lord more than activities we must love the lord more than church we must love the lord more than ministry we must love the lord more than the desire to be famous the desire to be great this is the first key to be mightily used by god john 14 and verse 21 john 14 and verse 21 very interesting rendition i was in shock the first day i found this scripture many years ago and 
it's not left my heart and it will remain with me forever he that keepeth my commandments the bible says he hath my commandments and keepeth them he it is that loveth me and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and i will love him and will manifest myself to him verse 23 same scripture john 14 and verse 23 jesus answered and said unto him if a man love me he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our abode with him so there is a key and there is a secret that controls the manifestation of god's power and grace intimacy 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 with god intimacy that produces hunger genuine hunger intimacy that produces passion passion that is beyond religion intimacy that produces such depth of love listen to me new covenant assembly if you want god to do great things with you personally and as a church in this season and in this time i want you to love the lord and to hunger to seek after him beyond prosperity beyond increase beyond breakthrough there must be a desperation from your heart there must be a drive to spend time in worship to spend time in prayer to spend time making god the highest priority in your life the price of intimacy I made up my mind as a man of God and as a person that nothing and no one and no activity will ever be able to take the place of God in my life I love him sincerely I love him beyond church I love him beyond ministry I will fold ministry a thousand times to preserve my relationship with him and this is the secret one of the secrets I would say that by the privilege of God's mercy has been responsible for his hand upon my life and what he continues to do in and through us the price of intimacy for many of you the Lord is calling you by this teaching return to the place of intimacy we started with hunger and passion but activities stole away his presence activities stole away time we can be busy for God busy doing great things for God and yet not be with God the Bible says an Enoch the seventh man from creation and Enoch walked with God and he was not my greatest desire and my greatest testimony at the end of my life is Christ Harris um, should not be that we build churches or we did had crusades or we had all kinds of things as wonderful as these reports and these testimonies may look my greatest desire is that it will be said at the end of my life that this man loved the Lord with all his heart and passionately sought the Lord and helped a generation to do same. Is the noblest testimony that I covet. Intimacy. Intimacy. You must be passionate about God and you must surrender everything. Everything is the key. You may have heard me say it in my teachings that the price for all of God is all of you. Not your offering, not your singing, not your teaching, not your church commitment alone. These things are wonderful, but the price for all of God is all of you. Your relevance, your ego, your money, your life, that is the price to see all of God. So God loves everybody, but he cannot use everybody. The reason is because not many are willing to pay the price to be intimate with God. The price to be intimate with the Holy Spirit. I have made up my mind that as far as I'm alive, it will become a, a journey, a pursuit that will never have an end. To seek His face and to love Him. And I continue to enjoy all kinds of supernatural blessings that come from intimacy. So price number one for personal revival is the price for intimacy prioritizing god prioritizing spiritual things prioritizing the things of the kingdom developing a hunger 
you know in our world today hunger is proof of health when people are sick the first thing they lose is appetite so the moment you no longer hunger after the things of god the word of god prayer fellowship and more importantly the desire to live by the principles of the kingdom that already is a symptom that your spirit man is sick because hunger is proof of health and the bible says blessed are they that hunger and thirst for they shall be filled so i pray and believe and join my faith with you that whilst you are listening to me that a hunger for god will well up within you again a hunger to return back to the place of prayer a hunger to fast acceptably a hunger to love jesus that in the busyness of the activities of our time and our day running up and down children family life career ministry business travels now covid you know several things that try to eat up our time and space we return back to the lord and say you still are my priority you still are my everything every other thing can go away but you still remain my priority in genesis chapter 28 um you may just write that for reference genesis chapter 28 the bible talks about a strange man called jacob that one time he came there and that jacob laid down to sleep he came to a place called loss and then he had a dream he saw a ladder ascending and descending the angels were on top moving around but the bible does not say they were coming to him they were moving around and going to those who were doing business with god and even though he was having these angelic encounters it did not profit him and he woke up and said surely the lord is in this place and i knew not he said this is the gate of heaven the house of god he missed out on that encounter because his heart was busy with so many things the next episode of his life will be in the house of laban battered frustrated humiliated defrauded for so many years and by the time we get to genesis 32 jacob now has learned his lesson the bible says he dismissed his wives he dismissed his cattle he dismissed everyone and everything and when he was alone a man came to him and the bible says a wrestle began that night and he, the man said leave me for the day breaketh and jacob said i will not let you go unless you bless me and he said what is your name he said jacob he said thou shalt no longer be called jacob for as a prince you have had power with god and you have prevailed he touched the hollow of his thigh and jacob became incapacitated his source of strength and stability outside of god was destabilized so that he would never find balance and completion outside of god's assistance and god called that a blessing that means inadequacy in the spirit is a blessing when you are complete outside of god there is trouble when god comes to you his first port of call is to seek that which makes you adequate without him that's how god blesses us in this kingdom inadequate without him amen now jacob received a blessing the moment he became inadequate and he was called israel for as a prince you have had power with god and you have prevailed and the bible says he was blessed and the sun arose and they called the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. Praise the name of the Lord. So intimacy with the Holy Spirit, intimacy with God is the first price and the first key to personal revival. Number two, very quickly. Number two, very, very quickly. The second key that controls revival in the life of an individual in the life of a church and in a territory is access to the mysteries of the kingdom access to the mysteries of the kingdom you're never going to be able to do much for the kingdom until you have sufficient level of spiritual illumination now many believers are well-meaning many believers are sincere but there is a gross level of spiritual darkness 
ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 the bible says having their understanding darkened it says being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart a believer can be born again can be in christ but not a, he may not be able to manifest the fullness of that potential because of darkness this kingdom is a kingdom that operates by light this kingdom is a kingdom that is driven by knowledge driven by knowledge hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 it says my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge i will also reject thee that thou shalt be no more priest to me seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy god i will also forget thy children knowledge knowledge we need knowledge psalm 25 and verse 14 psalm 25 and verse 14 very very powerful rendition the bible says the secret of the lord is with them that fear him so god has secrets not everything in the kingdom is for is is seen and known at plain sight every responsible man has different chambers in his house you have the living room you have the bedroom and not everyone would add would have access to the bedroom visitors can come and stay outside they may come into the living room but you only beckon on those who you have trusted those who you have built relationship with to be allowed into the living the inner room the inner chambers so the secret of the lord the bible says is with them that fear him is the hebrew word yirat adonai the spirit of reverence reverence for god and he will show them his covenants we rise in this kingdom on the strength of the mysteries and the secrets that we know psalm 82 from verse 5 very powerful classic renditions psalm 82 and verse 5 here's what it says they know not so it now begins to address the issue of ignorance they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness all the foundations of the earth are out of course verse 6 says i have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high the tragedy is in the next verse verse 7 it says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes so it's very very important for us to know and to understand that we need access to light access to light this light this body of spiritual knowledge they are called mysteries matthew chapter 13 and verse 11 please pay attention dear family of god pay attention he answered and said unto them because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven but to them it is not given it is given unto you to know we rise in this kingdom and we excel on the strength of the mysteries this body of spiritual knowledge that we know there is a mystery that controls lifting there is a mystery that controls speed there is a mystery that controls restoration there is a mystery that controls longevity there is a mystery that controls influence there is a mystery that controls being anointed our assignment as believers is to be like spiritual archaeologists searching for these mysteries case the key of david to be able to open doors and to shut doors there must be a passion and a hunger in us especially at this period of prayer and fasting to desire spiritual illumination high level spiritual illumination ephesians chapter 3 last scripture paul was mentoring the church in ephesus part of his apostolic ministry ephesians chapter 3 and he began to let them see the basis of his apostolic ministry from verse 3 he says how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as i wrote aforetime in few words we're reading down to verse 10 verse 4 says whereby when ye read ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of christ in other words i'm not these things were not just information that i learned i was brought initiated into a body of knowledge verse 5 says which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles 
and prophets by the spirit that the gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in christ by the gospel it says wherefore for this cause now i was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of god given unto me by the effectual working of his power unto me who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given that i should preach among the gentiles the unsearchable riches of christ verse 9 and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery here it is now which from the beginning of the world had been hid in god who created all things by christ jesus to the intent verse 10 to the intent that now this is what we do with these mysteries this is why we need to lay hold of them to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by the church the manifold multifaceted wisdom of god so we need access to the mysteries of the kingdom if we must experience revival in our lives revival an awakening a move of god we need access to light the days of spiritual ignorance must come to an end in our lives and this will come when we pursue the truth we must buy the truth and sell it not the truth is expensive we will use the currency of meekness the currency of hunger the currency of sincerity the currency of passion to buy the truth the times that we live in will no longer give room for ignorance and shadow boxing spiritually we must step into higher and more accurate levels the bible says to walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise this will require us knowing the exact spiritual keys that control the outcomes that we desire arbitrarily hoping that things will be better arbitrarily hoping that things will change arbitrarily hoping that one day things will be better is just a sociological system of comfort but it is not true it will take light light isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 it says arise shine for your light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you amplified says arise isaiah 60 and verse 1 it says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you rise to a new light it takes light spiritual illumination so let's do a quick recap the first key that controls personal revival and even territorial revival is the price of hunger passion consecration that ultimately culminates into intimacy with god then number two the price to access the mysteries of the kingdom knowledge light high level spiritual illumination the bible says that there were many lights when god was doing the creation in genesis chapter one there were many lights it says but there were two great lights and that this light would rule the day for one the sun and then the other the moon would rule in the night you must possess this light to rule the day and then to rule the night the next key and that will be the last for this session is that for you to be able to command superior levels of revival in your life and then across your territory and even in the church you need an encounter with unusual dimensions of the anointing an encounter with unusual dimensions of the anointing psalm 89 from verse 20 unusual dimensions of the anointing let me define the anointing what is the anointing the anointing is god's ability god's energy the capacity to produce God's dimension of results is called the anointing. The anointing is a system of authorization. It's a system of ordination. The anointing is a system of legitimization. It legitimizes your operation. The Bible says, I have found David my servant, and with my holy oil I have anointed him. Next verse. 
it says the with whom my hand shall be established my arm also shall strengthen him 22 the enemy by reason of the anointing shall not exert upon him nor the son of wickedness afflict him uh-huh next verse and i will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him 24 but my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him and in my name shall his horn be exalted this is the anointing isaiah chapter 61 the messianic prophecy it was theologically speaking um, an expression of the coming of jesus christ isaiah 61 but then by extension this also applies to the saints isaiah 61 from verse 1 the bible says the spirit of the lord god is upon me because he hath anointed ordained legitimized me to preach good tidings so it takes the anointing to preach good tidings it takes the anointing to bind up broken hearts not just a, a sense of empathy and sympathy it takes the anointing to proclaim liberty to the captives there are people who need more than counseling there are people who need more than therapies they need an encounter with unusual dimensions of the anointing it takes the anointing to open the prison to them that are bound people who physically may seem to be walking but in the realm of the spirit are under all kinds of yokes of bondage it takes the anointing to proclaim the acceptable year of the lord and the day of vengeance of our god it takes the anointing to comfort all those who mourn to appoint unto them verse 3 says who mourn in zion it takes the anointing to give men beauty for ashes listen to me believers it takes the anointing to give men beauty for ashes and oil of joy for mourning the bible says the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness to the end that they might be called trees or oaks of righteousness the planting of the lord that he might be glorified the anointing i believe in the power of the holy spirit my life is a product of the anointing that which god has done and continues to do through my life and the ministry is a product of the anointing what the lord has done so far in the life of your pastor and even the church is a product of the anointing we need the anointing we need superior dimensions of the anointing yesterday's oil may not be able to solve today's challenges we need ever increasing levels of the anointing and there are two keys that control the manifestation of the anointing many really but two for this session there are two main keys that control the coming the arrival and the multiplication of the anointing upon the life of an individual number one the first key is prayer and fasting from the bible and from church history prayer and fasting have been the irrefutable keys that control personal revival there will not be any substitute no matter what for prayer and fasting not just prayer prayer with fasting in luke chapter 4 luke chapter 4 we we'll read from verse 14 luke chapter 4 from verse 14 this is jesus this is jesus now when you read the preceding verses the bible lets us know that having after he was filled uh, with the holy spirit having been baptized of john in jordan the bible says the spirit drove him to the wilderness and there he fasted 40 days and night was tempted of the devil overcame the devil through the word and then the synoptic rendition of luke says and jesus returned in the power of the spirit he went to the wilderness filled with the spirit but returned in the power of the spirit and the bible says there went out a fame of him throughout all the region round about believers must pray and believers must fast believers must pray and believers must fast prayer and fasting are non-negotiable non-negotiable requirements for power for grace genuine authentic anointing answers to prayer and fasting there is no man of god 
world over who genuinely walks in significant levels of the power of the holy spirit commanding strange order of results who is a stranger to the ministry of prayer and fasting is one of the cardinal indices of priesthood the ability to pray the ability to fast luke chapter 18 and verse 1 the bible says jesus spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint first thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17 the bible says pray without season it does not mean pray all day long it means be consistent pray without season james chapter 5 from verse 13 apostle james was mentoring us and helping us understand the dynamics of prayer and here's what he said is any of you afflicted he didn't say let him go around discussing with people who may not be able to help the 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 scriptural solution recommendation for any kind of affliction is let him pray the bible says you have not because you ask not you have not because you ask not prayer is powerful prayerlessness is pride the highest proof of pride is prayerlessness because it's a declaration that you do not need the assistance of heaven being prayerful is humility it's a sign that you are ever conscious of your inadequacy outside of the assistance of heaven prayerlessness is a real attack whatever attacks your prayer life has attacked your destiny whatever has attacked your prayer life eventually every other aspect of your life will reflect the quality of your prayer life unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come the bible says my house jesus flogging and dismissing people out of the temple for merchandising his house here's what he had to say he says my house shall be called a house of prayer but you have turned it to a den of robbers there's a powerful revelation there if your body is the temple of the holy spirit if it is not a house of prayer then robbers will come to your body robbers will come to your body they will come as sicknesses they will come as infirmity they will come as negative conditions so if your house which is god's house is either a house of prayer or a den of robbers i believe in the ministry of prayer you do not know how cheap the devil is you do not know how powerful god is until you submit yourself to the ministry of priesthood the prayer that prevails now there are many dimensions to prayer but the primary assignment of prayer is not for petitions the primary assignment of prayer is for your transformation more than an instrument to petition god your transformation as jesus prayed his raiment became white and glycerin transformation through the ministry of prayer prayer and fasting is a practice that has been lost in many christian circles and all that is left there is religion and a similitude of the dry bones in ezekiel 37 the first miracle that happened for the bones to become an army was a restoration of structure a restoration of the bones bones coming back to his bones patterns coming back to their patterns and by this i really salute pastor call and the entire pastorate of the new covenant assembly for being sensitive enough to the holy spirit to set up this time of prayer this time of fasting now i submit to you that it takes a lot of sacrifice it takes a lot of constraint to fast for a prolonged period but then in the midst of it you command levels of power there is medicinal value in fasting 
medical people tell us that when you submit yourself to fasting after a period pending on the kind of fast i'm not going into that now but after three or four days a period of a, a process of cleansing begins detoxification begins in your body a breaking down of of an, an exiting of dead cells and all kinds of things it is true dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the face of development lord grant me the discipline 